Hi Pune, what's up? Hey, I am Piyush Gupta and I am here to share my journey on digital transformation. I come from a product management and a digital transformation background and most recently I have used my skills in retail, e-commerce, healthcare and now in media. I would like to share my experience with you all but before that let me speak a bit about the evolution of automation. We as humans we come from a background where we used to hunt or gather to survive. But humans are smart but lazy at the same time. We have graduated from sticks to plows to tractors and now completely autonomous systems like hydrophonics. We have evolved from everyone making food to modern ways of agriculture, wherein we don't need to do manual full cultivation, but yet we have yields which are in abundance. From this example, I am trying to refer to mechanical muscles. Of course, this is not limited to farming. We have present and we have spent the past several centuries building tools to reduce our physical labor. These are mechanical muscles. Mechanical muscles which are more stronger, they are tireless and reliable at the same time, which as compared to human muscles can never be. Which is a good thing and we all appreciate it. Replacing human labor with mechanical muscles frees up humans to specialize into different skills. This is exactly how economies have grown and our standards of living have risen. Some of us have specialized to be engineers, data scientists, whose jobs are to come create now mechanical minds. Just as mechanical muscles have driven out human labor, mechanical minds are going to drive out the human brain labor. This is again an economic revolution, but this time it's different. Just to draw some parallels, horses and bulls were replaced by cars. And now, as we all know, we have self-driven cars. Not just that, we are on the verge where we have self-driven trucks, buses and trains too. And this is no long, lo longer a sci-fi movie. It's a harsh reality. Globally, sooner or later, 70 million jobs in this sector is going to be impacted just because of this automation. One might think these autos are getting rid of just the low-skilled jobs. And we might think that by doing so, we might have more skilled jobs and more educated jobs. However, even the white-collar jobs are not safe. This is how we are migrating from the Flintstones era to the Jetsons era. Bots, bots like ChatGPT nowadays, are started to threaten even giants like Google. The only incentive to automate such jobs are far more than the low skilled jobs. Nowadays, bots like ChatGPT, they have self-learning capabilities. They develop new skills on their own by observing a lot of correctly done jobs. And at times, they are trained by humans, but this dependency of human training is only reducing day by day. Even stock markets nowadays are run by sophisticated job bots. These bots are trained with trends and with technical data. They make decisions and they are slowly removing the dependency on traders. Efficiency is the key driver here, while we save a lot on cost. In terms of accuracy, all these bots have to beat is an average human's accuracy. Even in professional uh, practices, like practicing doctors, they are taught to diagnose an ailing body. Now, these sophisticated self-learning bots can be fed in a lot of data, and through data, they can, highly they can diagnose highly accurately. This accuracy is only improving day by day, and we are now able to even detect things like cancer. When we think about lawyers, 
we think about trials, but 85% of the time a lawyer spends actually goes into documentation, creating legal drafts, doing discovery of documents where they have to go through a bunch of documents wherein they need to find that particular pattern or that out of the place transaction which they can use. Now with the self-learning bots, even lawyers don't have to spend that much amount of time. These bots, these robots can work round the clock and with fair accuracy. And even for highly skilled jobs, the impact of automation is not far. Now coming to newsroom automation, talking about automated articles, what I have done in the past recent past years is that talking about structured articles which are data driven and not narrative in nature, we have been able to solve that. So when I talk about an article which is about fuel prices, bullion, stock market, annual reports, all this is completely automated. And not just that, we have even automated auto summarization of articles too. Next in line is videos. When we feed an engine, a data driven engine with a textual content, it can, it can spit out a very articulated video directly. Again, these are non-narrative videos. In case of videos and articles, we also have the option to publish these articles and videos in multilingual languages. This is again amazing for a media company. Automated in image insertion, no article is complete without a proper image. Now, these engines have capabilities to pick the right image from the image bank depending on the content. Now coming to SEO, which is metadata creation. Here also, these engines can give me a well trendy SEO as an output. Not just that, we have also started working on auto publishing, which means my social marketing teams can rely on these engines, which will take the decision when to publish a particular article, at what platform, and at what time. This is an end-to-end -end solution that we have created, wherein we have taken care of content, videos, images, SEO, and even social marketing. What this does for my newsroom automation, my SEO, and my media team and media marketing teams is that they free them up with the continuous repetitive work. The turnaround time can also be reduced greatly. And the volumes, I can now publish these articles, not just to a particular city, but globally has also increased. With this save time, now my editorial teams can now focus on more research oriented articles, more research oriented videos and they can be more trendy in nature. Now coming, now coming to subscriptions. In the past several years, we have realized the need to have digital subscription as a footprint. We started with hard paywalls, wherein, let's say after you have read three, five, seven, or 10 articles, we used to throw a hard paywall to you asking for a subscription. But sooner or later, we realized that these hard paywalls are not going to work. We need to factor in a user behavior into it. That is where we started developing our propensity engines. These engines now come and inform us that depending upon the user reading behavior, when to show a paywall to a particular user. Not just that, we can also tune in the pricing to a user liking, which means with dynamic pricing and a dynamic paywall, my subscription base can now be increased and I can more rely on this as a revenue stream. Each technology wave has brought tremendous opportunities to, to the those who are ready to serve these capabilities. This time, it's no different. Businesses has mastered the digitization trend will only be benefited. They will be benefited so that they can serve their customers better and also lower their costs significantly while driving up their revenue. 
technologies like natural language processing, computer vision, AI, autonomic systems, generative AI, work for augmentation are some of the trends which are in market today. These technologies help make sense of information generated by employees, customers, and these machines can take better and more informed decisions which are more time sensitive in nature as of now. So with this, I'm not saying automation is bad. Automation is inevitable. It's a tool which is going to produce abundance and with a little effort. So we need to start think, what are we going to do with these unemployable jobs with no fault of their own? Thank you.